Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> yes! This is Nerf's Halo MA40. It's a semi-automatic motorized Nerf gun that unfortunately is about as strong as its in-game counterpart. Out of the box, this thing can barely shoot across my room. We're gonna make it a little better. Now I have two main design goals I wanna hit. First is gonna be upgrading the motors on this thing. That's gonna be the easiest thing to do. Holy shit. After that comes upgrading the firing mechanism. To me, what that means is going from semi-automatic to fully automatic. This is a bad idea. What the fuck? Now I also have some smaller goals I wanna reach. For the motors, I wanna add motor speed control. I wanna at least give this the option to be fair. Early on, I wanted to add dynamic braking, which isn't too bad to do, but just right now, it would take a lot more time, and honestly, I just want to be done. As for the firing mechanism, I want to have three modes of firing. I want to keep the semi-automatic function, but as I said, I also want to make this thing fully automatic. And you know, just because we can, we might as well throw in a burst fire. Now having all our goals lined up, it's time to get to work. As I said before, upgrading the motors is going to be the easiest part. You're pretty much just buying better motors and then a battery that can handle the jump in current. Slowing it down isn't too bad either. Rather than limiting the voltage or current with something like a resistor, we're going to be using what's called PWM. You can think of PWM as effectively turning something on and off, but very precisely and very, very quickly. Internally, motors are made up of coils. Depending on how coily these motors are, they can induce a voltage that acts against the changing current. What this means is that when we cut off the voltage supply, we end up making a negative voltage spike. Combine that with PWM, and you end up with huge voltage spikes thousands of times a second. The solution to this is as simple as giving the current somewhere to go using what's called a snubber diode. We're effectively giving current generated by that negative voltage a path to flow through. As an added security, we're also lowering the PWM frequency, which is literally just going to be one line of code. Once I finished that, I was finally able to work on fully automatic firing. Thing is though, going from semi-auto to full auto inside this nerf gun needs a complete overhaul of the entire internal system. You go from pulling a trigger and manually pushing the dart, to electronically controlling a solenoid that will do the work for us. This is a huge pain in the ass though. I had to look really long and hard for a solenoid that had a stroke that was big and powerful enough to get the dart all the way inside the motor cage. Not only that, I had to make sure it wasn't too thick of a solenoid, otherwise it would be too tight of a fit inside the shell and it might just split the shell in half. I finally ended up on this solenoid that had barely any information about it on the seller's page. All I knew was that it ran off of 12 volts. My battery supplies 7 volts. Don't worry though, we can get around this. That's, that's what I told myself when I started. <laughs> Uh, See, there's some voodoo magic you can do to multiply that voltage to theoretically anything. The concept is to store charge and release it in such a way that the output voltage is higher than the input. This is much easier said than done though, because that power has to come from somewhere. Having a high output voltage needs a higher input current than you would normally need. And it's these high currents that break all of our parts. I mean, just, just ask any of my four dead Bruce converters. <laughs> I mean, like this... This last one, this last one I broke just a few days ago. I mean, just, just look. Yes, 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 yes. Oh God, there's smoke. I mean, it, it worked, it worked. It worked for like a few seconds, but I killed it. The, the way I stopped killing them is so dumb too. Uh, you remember how I said motors are made up of coils? Solenoids are just one big fat coil with a magnetic rod inside of it. My dumbass forgot that. Oh god. And cut burning up boost converter after boost converter. There's smoke. Before I remembered. Oh, hey! We can use a snubber diode. I've already used a snubber diode. <sighs> Once I added that though, everything else ran perfectly. And here, editing the firing modes is the easiest part. It's all done through the code, which I'm gonna stop showing because it's boring and it anyways, this all relies on being able to use a microcontroller. I mean, you could do it without one, in fact, like, my earlier prototypes weren't without one. They were using discrete logic. But using a microcontroller board like an Arduino makes it so much easier to tune, or in my case, to fix your mistakes. 
Once you do fix them though, I can't even begin to express how happy I am that this thing finally exactly. works. And it took it took me so long too. Between what, like seven minutes of footage is about seven months of work. Uh, I'm sure I could have finished sooner by waiting for someone to develop a kit and just putting that in. But honestly, I'm a lot more happy finding and piecing everything together myself. I was a little misleading though. I said earlier that I fixed the voltage multiplier situation. I didn't really. Uh, <laughs> I ended up burning one more before I decided to just go the simpler out and buy two different batteries. Uh, not my favorite solution, but it works really well. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to tell you it works well, I'm just going to show you that it works well. For y'all who want to see, here's a quick look inside, and this is where I put the two batteries, the solenoid, and the Arduino. But that's not what you're here to see, so I'm going to take us outside and show you all the things this can do. First thing I'm going to do is turn the motor speed knob. It's not too big of a deal, but I'm happy that it works. As for the actual firing, You've got semi-automatic, you know, you pull the trigger, you get one dart. But I kind of messed up the code, so I, I have to double press sometimes. To change firing modes, you're going to turn the switch on the outside. The burst fire shoots three darts, or, you know, I guess two if you run out of ammo. And finally, you've got fully automatic firing. I am in love with the full auto mode. It shoots ten darts every second, and it'll only stop when you want it to stop. Here, I'm going to put up more footage of me playing around with this right now. While that goes on in the background, I just want to say thanks for watching. Uh, this video is already a lot longer than I want it to be, so I'm going to wrap this part up pretty quick. This is the first video I've made like this, but I really want to keep making content from the things that I'm making. I already have projects planned and lined up, so there's going to be more info in the description about everything from the Nerf guns to the future of the channel. Thank you for watching, guys. This is so sick. The issue is that I have no ammo like constantly. This thing is just